Hi guys and welcome to the next delivery here on the Super Data Science YouTube channel. We are focusing on Tableau today and we are looking at the analytics pane within Tableau. Now it is said to be the drag and drop of advanced analysis on Tableau. Let's see how that stands the test of time. We have broken down this tutorial into um, different parts. We will go through each of them individually, but we will firstly start off by looking at where to find it and how it is structured. So the analytics pane, it is hidden underneath the data tab. So you might have seen it already or not. Underneath on the left hand side of the data tab, you will click on analytics and you would find three different categories. Now it's got the summarize, model and custom categories. So you will also notice that some of these have been um, grayed out already. And this is due to the fact that whatever you've currently got in the visualization um, and well, is needed for the specific analytics to perform. So if it's hidden or grayed out, you would notice that Tableau has given us the um, little error message or a little information message to say why we are unable to perform that specific one. That way you can include the information you need or know a bit more around why it is not available. Now the series we've structured is done into three different episodes. The first episode is looking at lines, bands and distributions. The second episode we will be looking at clustering our data and the trend lines. And in the last episode we'll focus on box plots, some, some theory around box plots as well as how to create one looking at creating forecasts and using the total functionality. All right, firstly, episode one, lines, bands, and distributions. So the screen I am showing you is gonna become very vital for what we are doing. But before I jump the gun, let's look at some at why it is structured the way it is. So you will notice that the ones that we are looking in at today, which are highlighted in yellow, are the ones that are um, all driven from this screen over here. You will see that all the items in the custom section are the ones that give you additional functionality when dragged onto the sheet. Whereas the ones in the top two categories, if you incorporate them, they'll be using some of the standard functionality within Tableau or the standard um, and default properties with Interblow to create that visualization or that analytic for your visualization. But let's jump into Tableau and have a look at what this is that we're talking about. So we're going to be using the Superstore sample data um, that's part of Tableau, shipped with Tableau. And you might have used this before. If not, um, we're looking at orders. So it's a list of all the different orders, uh, order line items in different categories. So furniture, as you can see, is a category and some subcategories. We've got different products. But what's also important is the sales as well as the profit and then the profit ratio. And that's important for our for our analysis today, as this is the, as this is the data set which we are going to be using. All right, let's start off with a basic visualization where we'll take the profit ratio by category and subcategory. Now, I'm sure this is something you've done before. I'm just gonna put that to the entire view so it's quite easy and straightforward. I'll be using the profit ratio, which is a calculated field. Let me just have a look at that. A calculated field, which takes the sum of profit divided by the sum of sales. And that has already been created by Tableau as part of supplying this data source. We'll use this color. Or we'll, we'll use this calculated field as color. Move our legend around. And as always, when working with financial numbers, I change it to a red green and because green is the color of money and that is our visualization. So firstly, we will rename this uh, to our first uh, analytics that we'll be doing and we'll call this our constant line. I'm going to make seven copies of this, basically just duplicating this a number of times. Um, this is due to the fact that we'll be reusing the same visualization over a couple of times. Um, I don't want to recreate the visualization. So if we start off with constant line, we can literally go to the analytics tab, as I mentioned, underneath the data tab and just drag in our constant line. You'll see it appears at the bottom at the minimum um, and it opens up a label or a, a little text box where we can input the value. If we want to, for instance, takes 36%, so that's 0 0.36 in this case and hit OK, it would show us the line easily on the graph. 
Now we are able to click on it and it, it, once we clicked, you can see there's a couple of values. We can either, or a couple of options rather. We can either remove it. Let's just get it back. We can either remove it, we can format it, edit it, or change the value. So changing the value is pretty straightforward. So we can make that 37% if needed. And then we can go and edit it. So edit brings up the screen we spoke about earlier. And here you've got the different groupings, the lines, which we were speaking about, the bands, which we will be coming to as well, distribution of the, the, um, the values within our data set, and box plot in a later episode. So what's important here is we can actually um, change, like the, firstly, the value. So there is it. And then also the line type. So we can make this dashed line and even a line color if you wanted to. Uh, let's make it green in this case. Green. Um, and we will color it above in green as well. So these would be, for instance, our great performers. And we can even edit this and call this, um, well, change the label, make this custom, and call this great performers. And I made a spelling mistake. <laughs> Let's just go and fix that. Great performers. There we are. And if you wanted to have a second constant line, that's also possible. And uh, you can just drag that onto the onto the sheet again same happens and we can change this to let's say 14% for instance and again edit this to your liking by filling maybe the bottom everything below that in red which indicates our poor performers and you can let me to show you as well you can combine create a custom label and combine for instance these are the poor performers so if we do type it out like this we can say okay it's poor performers that are below 14% and by clicking that little icon over there, we can put in the value of the current item. Um, let's just edit that, sorry. Let's just change it. So poor performers, and we'll put the value in there and say, okay, it's taking it as 14%. I just want to add in afterwards now to say it's less than 14%. All right, and those are our poor performance. So that's straightforward, the constant line. And as you can see, nothing difficult about that. All right, if we go on to the next one and we'll use the average line, you'll see it works in a very similar way. Now, average line, and we'll be dragging that onto our sheet. And again, here you'll see now we've got different options. We can either do it over the whole table, which says it will take an average over all the values, or per pane, so it will be taking the office supplies separate to the technology um, and you can do sell as well. In this case, I think paint will make a lot of sense. And voila, you've got your average line. So again, we are able to edit this because it would be nice to see what that average value is. So we can just change this to value and hit OK. And again, you've got the same options. My bad. You've got the same options to go and edit and change everything else. Also, what you've noticed is if I do select different values, let's take those three it automatically updates the line over there with a new average. There's the old average of the whole um, section, but if for, the, for those three, it's 19. And that is something you can set as well at the bottom of this um, editing your properties. You can show recalculate line for every, for highlighted or select the data points. And that's something that's um, highlighted by default, but you are able to untick that if you don't need it for your visualization. And that is as simple, straightforward as your average line is. But what I have mentioned also is if you wanted to not use the standard ones and drag and drop them in there, but you still want to have it nice and easy to get into your visualization, is if you change this to your reference, well, I'm gonna change this to reference line and work with another visualization and just take from our custom menu, reference line. And this is where, as I mentioned, they are, Tableau are giving us the option to um, customize it a bit more where as the top parts that we are just using the straightforward um, yeah, options as they've given for us to be able to quickly get some analytics out of our data. But let's use reference line again per pane or per table. This time around I'll use it per table. Same famous screen but in this case perhaps we don't want to see the average. We don't want to see a constant but we want perhaps look at the median and we want to show a custom label where we show what the median is as well as the value which we can then put down like that all right and once again we can change the line type 
to whatever we want and change and format anything else that we do want to do. So that's how we can add a reference line with any different kind of um, calculation. So if we edit this again, by the way, a shortcut if you wanted to change, for instance, what is being, what kind of aggregation is being shown, is on the line itself, clicking once, you'll see this little drop down there and you can change it to sum even, which doesn't make any sense in this case, but you are able to do that. And that is your reference line. Let's look at the median with quartiles. I'm just gonna call this with Q. All right, let us create and just take it from the model. Automatically again, our options table or pane, let's put this onto pane. So what happened right now? So Tableau, if you just hover over what has been created, has given us the upper quartile, it has given us a line with the median and it has given us a lower quartile and the same for each of the panes. So how do we interpret this? So the upper quartile is basically slicing off the top 25% of our data. So you'll see the quartile is at 10% and don't confuse it with the top 25%. But in essence, it's saying that the top 25% of the values are above that line. And as you can see, perhaps let's look at office supplies a bit now, easier here. The top 25% of the values is above that line. With this being the median and with that being the lower value, lower quartile cutting the bottom 25% of the value of the items. So if you want to see a little bit differently, we can just format this. Um, sorry, not format this, edit it. Uh, what I like to do is just to see it a bit easier and maybe at this point, what I can tell you as well is the median with quartiles is a combination of two things. So it would be of the of a distribution and of a constant line. So if I do edit the distribution, you can see it is highlighting the distribution and it has different properties that we can edit. If we, for instance, clicked on the median and edited that, it looks like the normal median line we had earlier. So that's the only difference here that um, it's actually a combination of two. Again, Tableau making it a bit easier for us to just combine it and include it into our graph. But back to what I was trying to do is to edit this. I like to say fill it above and below in a non-symmetrical fashion. This shows it nicer. So you can see, looking again, the top 25% of the data is above this quartile. Then we've got the median, which cuts the down half and the lower quartile, which puts the, 20, the, the bottom 25% of the data into the last quartile. So that is how easy it is to add quartiles with the median to your data. Now looking at our model section, let's just call this our average, or you know what, we're gonna combine anyway. So let's call it 95% confidence interval. Okay. So when we work with these two, the only difference is the one is based on the average of your data and the one is on the median. So I'm not going to do them separately. We'll just do it together, but they work in exactly the same fashion. So once again, if we drag it on and we select this time around to have it over the whole table, the Tableau gives us the average as well as distribution band over here or a reference band as such. So what this is saying is that we've got an average of 18% over here. And Tableau has calculated for us that with 95% confidence interval that we have our, um, all of the data would be in this gray section over there. So what this in essence say, is saying is that the confidence interval band shades the region in which the population average will fall 95% of the time. Perhaps it's a bit easier if we look at it on a category by category level and we don't have to redo much, we can just say edit and now say we want to see it per pane and immediately it changes. So again, we've got different averages for each of the sections and for each of the categories and those could have been median, remember? But we can see that the distribution of the values determine the confidence interval. So when the values are a bit closer to each other, the confidence interval shrinks. When we have it much bigger apart, like technology, the confidence interval extends or um, increases quite significantly. And this is how you create your 95% interval. We could also have adjusted this by using the median and you'll see your confident bands update immediately as well. Now let's have a look at our, we've already looked at reference line. Let's look at our reference band. So when we take our reference band again, 
we can do it on a specific area. So let's do it on the pane. You'll see it takes us to our band section over there. So this is basically a combination of two different lines with the shaded area in the middle where we can define what needs to be shown. We'll be using profit ratio again. And let's say we want to show it from the minimum of the profit ratio to not the maximum, which is also possible, but to the average. And we want to color it in a different color. Let's use that color over there. This might be something we want to highlight or just point out for follow up and we can just hit OK over there. So we can see that the ones that are in the shaded area might need some uh, some inspection or some some work done around them but the ones outside of it are great and they are way above our average um, and that's that's how straightforward it is for your reference band for your distribution band let's do our distribution band let's just rename that firstly to put our distribution band in there and we do it per table you can see that as we had with our quartiles this gives us further ability to work on the, um, the distribution. So we take it per, in, per the whole table, but where we previously had four quartiles, so I'm just gonna set it to what we had before, so quantiles, four of them. We can change firstly the number of tiles to 10, end up with decimals, or we could do it per percentile. So we can say, uh, including the 90th percentile, uh, let's just quickly see, there we are. Or we could change it to percentages. So on a percentage based from, let's say the minimum. So here you are, so from the minimum, what's 60% of that, what's 80% of the minimum. Um, so again, here you can change as much as you want and whatever works for you. You've also got standard deviation to work with. And yeah, the, the world is your oyster, as they say. To, to basically do this. So that is in essence our first episode. Thanks for joining us today. Um, I hope this has been um, enlightening for you. Do stay tuned. We are coming with um, for the further two episodes, especially around you know the box plots as well as the, the clusters and the trend lines. Those are really exciting. So do stay tuned, do subscribe to our YouTube channel and I will see you next time.